Our guest in this segment is Travis Bost. You might remember that name from the Board of Education races a couple of years ago. And Travis was on the program a couple of times. He is now the vice chair of the Libertarian Party in the state of West Virginia. And we welcome him to the show once again. Travis, good morning to you. Good morning. Travis, Good to be here again. Veteran of 20 years of service in the United States Navy. Travis, thank you for that. Retired during the pandemic, right? Yes. Uh, they said they offered me some money to keep going. I said no thanks and uh, uh, took my retirement and came up here to the free state of West Virginia. Time to retire, so here you are. But what are you doing now? Uh, I'm working in the data center industry. I'm a field, uh, field service engineer uh, building switchboards and uh, power distribution units for, for data centers. So basically, I power the servers that power your internet. Oh, very good. Gotcha. And uh, in regards to the Libertarian Party, how did you get involved with them? Uh, uh, when I came into the area, uh, folks like uh, Brett Rogers and Dave Valente mm -hmm. and uh, and Matt Lucas, well, various people in the Libertarian Party, got, uh, I got to know them uh, through um, – let me start over there. Sure. So during the pandemic, uh, as lots of people did, I started watching a lot of podcasts and paying attention to um, alternative news media. Mm -hmm. And and there was a lot of pushback to the lockdowns and other issues like that. And that got me into uh, libertarian speakers and then the libertarian space. And then I reached out to West Virginia mm -hmm. and, and it just kind of uh, went on from there. I figured out I'd been mostly libertarian most of my life, just didn't know it. Mm-hmm. And, and what would you regard as the main principles of the Libertarian Party? Uh, well, the, the one you hear most often is uh, don't hurt people, don't, hang, don't take their stuff. Uh, uh, individual rights, mm -hmm. uh, but real individual rights, uh, but that don't extend to harming other people or, or infringing on their rights in, in the most basic sense. I could, we could talk longer and hash that out. But. As, a, as a third party, the Libertarian Party, generally speaking, has given people a, an option if you didn't like either the main party candidates uh, over uh, many years now. Uh, will you have a uh, presidential candidate in the upcoming election and a candidate for governor of West Virginia once again, Travis? Yes, let's start with the f second question. Yeah. Um, Erica Kalinich ran in 2020 as the governor gubernatorial candidate for West Virginia. Yeah. And she'll be running. A, she is on the ballot again this year. So you'll find a libertarian on your ballot if you're not happy with Big Jim or, or someone else. And uh, that, well, that's Senate. Big Jim's running for Senate. So mm -hmm. David Moran is also will be on your ballot for Senate uh, running against Big Jim. And then Erica is on the ballot for governor. Okay. Uh, her plug plug time. Uh, her website is now is the time WV dot com mm -hmm. or Kolinich for Kolinich F O R wv.com if that one doesn't resolve correctly gotcha okay and you're actually here to promote something as well coming up this weekend yes uh, so this weekend is the libertarian national convention it's actually being held in washington dc uh, right in the heart of the swamp at the washington hilton uh, you can find out more information about that at lnc2024.com but at this convention which is going to run thursday evening through sunday we will be nominating our, our candidate for president. Um, there, are, there are about six major candidates who have been running for a year or more. Um, if I, you want me to go through those? or uh, Yeah, good. Just so. one of the major ones. So the major ones, uh, Michael Rechtenwald, uh, Mike Termott, Josh Smith, Lars Mapstead, and Chase Oliver. Uh, Michael Rechtenwald is maybe famous among some of your audience for getting canceled from NYU a few years back. Uh, over, uh, he used to be a Marxist and converted very quickly when he got canceled. I believe it was over the um, Halloween costume issue where they were banning mm -hmm. Halloween costumes. Uh, that was big in the news maybe five or six years ago. Uh, Mike Tremont was a former congressional candidate down in Florida uh, and was an economist at the White House for the Bush administration, the first Bush administration, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, Joshua Smith is a former vice chair of the Libertarian National Committee. Uh, Lars Mapstead is a co-founder of FriendFinder Networks. And Chase Oliver is was a Senate candidate down in Georgia who you may have heard caused the runoff between uh, Ralph Warnock and um, Herschel Walker. And then uh, the other uh, name, Jacob Hornberger, some of you may know as well. He's been running for president a number of years. He's an author. Um, he founded the Future of Freedom Foundation, 
and uh, also ran for Senate against John Warner in 2002 in Virginia. Okay. So those are the major candidates, uh, and I can go through the nomination process if you like. Well, let's get a few questions sure. from Bill and from John. Yeah. Please. Now, in the last election, <coughs> what percent of the uh, uh, polls did the Libertarian Party – what what percent did the Libertarian Party poll last time? Uh, last time, our candidate was Joe Jorgensen with Spike Cohen as the vice presidential nominee and uh, nationally about 1.4 percent. And what do you have to have to get on a debate? Is that 5 percent? I believe it is 15 percent to get on a debate. Okay, yeah. And – the interesting things about debates is the, you know, this year the Republicans had pulled out of the commission of, for debates, and it didn't look like there were going to be any debates, but now Trump has ch challenged Biden or vice versa, so there may be debates. Um, and that kind of goes into what, what I'm here for today. Um, <clears throat> so uh, April 26th, the chair of the Libertarian National Committee, Angela McArdle, extended invitations to both Biden and Donald Trump to come address our convention and answer our grievances. Uh, Donald Trump accepted. So Donald Trump will be speaking to the delegates at the Libertarian National Convention on Saturday evening. Uh, now that caused a bit of a firestorm in the party and in major media, Washington Post, uh, MSNBC, those sort of outlets, uh, because it isn't very unusual and unprecedented. Yeah, I would say, well, why Why would the Libertarian Party want the Republican nominee, presume, presumptive nominee, to address their convention? Uh, so the the feeling from the, <coughs> excuse me, from the committee is, uh, like, like we talked about the debates, the since, um, was it 1992, since Ross Perot, mm -hmm. there hasn't been a third party or independent in the, in the debates. And this year it didn't look like there was going to be a debate. Uh, so we said, hey, instead of, Every year, getting two to four percent or less, and, and and wishing for that debate stage. Well, we have our stage. Let's bring someone to our stage. And the invitations were sent out, and uh, Donald Trump accepted. So it's. Uh, but he's not there to debate, is he? He's not there to debate because he's not going to agree to debate us. Uh, and so from that announcement, uh, very shortly thereafter, uh, Robert Kennedy Jr. said, "Hey, I want to come talk to you." Uh, so RFK Jr. is going to come address us as well. He challenged Trump to a debate, uh, which made some news, but that's 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 not going to happen. So what's the way it's going to lay down is we have prepared a list of issues important to us that we want him to consider, and should we should we not win the presidential race, we want to influence. The idea is to influence uh, the candidates that are running that are vying for our for our votes uh, because. It is going to be a close election uh, by, by many accounts. Mm -hmm. um, and at the same time, bring that attention, bring that media attention to our convention and, and make people say, what is a libertarian? Which is a point I want to get to. You confuse me. Um, I have always thought that the Libertarian Party is more, is, is more conservative than the standard Republican Party in, in many regards. And then you mentioned that one of your candidates, one of the, the, the slate, the, the six, I guess, candidates that you, you mentioned, one of them is a former Marxist, which is certainly not a conservative viewpoint. So what, what, what are the underpinnings of the Libertarian Party? How does it dif differentiate itself from the other not? I, OK, I'll just leave it at that. How does it differentiate itself from the other standard parties? So that uh, so the gentleman I mentioned, who was a former Marxist, and this has been seven or eight years ago, uh, one of the things that underpins his philosophy and the philosophy of many libertarians is property rights, uh, and property rights stemming mainly from, like you own your own self, you own uh, you own your labor that you can sell or trade to someone else through working, but you own yourself, and then whatever you acquire through that is your property. So property rights is the is the foundation of everything, and that he woke up to that idea, as many of us do, uh, and, and that obviously property is not – personal property, private property is not a big – not popular among Marxists. And then – and for him as well, the, the uh, Republicans will, will say there is a Marxist movement in the colleges. He would agree, and he 
kind of got got the treatment from them, got rejected, because they will reject you on a whim if you don't toe the line. Are you suggesting that prop I mean, property rights is settled law in the United States? Are you suggesting that there's a party now that or that there's law in the United States that is not protecting individual property rights? Well, if we start there and go to normal libertarian topics such as taxation, regulation, um, asset forfeiture, we, we say there's property rights, but in reality, property rights are severely limited by law. What's the libertarian position on some of the social issues, uh, abortion, transgender, and the like? Uh, so transgender, uh, we generally say an, uh, an adult can do what they want with their own body, whatever they want to do voluntarily that's not harming someone else. Um, that's the that's position. Uh, abortion, there's a division in the party right now. I wouldn't call it a division. There's different opinions. Uh, some some take the abortion, uh, life begins at conception and and go back to, so I'm going to find this camera here. Uh, the idea that abortion is murder, and some go all the way up to the pro-choice side of things. You mentioned in regards to Bill's question with transgender issues in regards to adults, how about minors, which was a big part of the Republican primary we just concluded. What is the attitude there? Uh, so I'll start. Well, my attitude would be, uh, as with many other issues, a minor cannot consent to certain things. Can uh, a minor's parents I, I don't believe so, depending on what it is. Uh, and this is a very, like I said, very contentious. The same divisions that affect uh, Republicans and Democrats, those divides mm -hmm. creep into the Libertarian Party. Uh, that is not, um, but like I said, uh, our focus is on consenting adults doing what they want to do and then protecting the rights of children from harm, uh, which that that's where the, that's where the, that's where we get to that, that very fine line. That's a debate we're still having. On, on the big issues in terms of the, the platforms of the Libertarian Party, strong national defense, uh, interstate highways, uh, yes on those things. I mean, the, the, there are a lot of issues, Social Security. Um, there are a lot of things right now the government pays for, and they're expensive, and they have to be paid for by other people's money by through taxation. So without taxation, those things don't get paid for. So, what? How does that work with the libertarian philosophy? I, uh, so I said we were nominating our presidential candidate this weekend. Mm -hmm. So among those candidates, we we range from um, eliminate Social Security tomorrow because it's eliminate it. Eliminate it. It's it's stolen money or not stolen. It's uh, money that doesn't exist. How am I going? To, how am I buying my dog food? Exactly. Uh, so that's now all the way up to um, eliminate it, but give it some time frame, some time period to convert to another system, which I believe the Republicans and maybe also the Democrats have talked about this in the past, uh, phasing out uh, to a, something where you pay in uh, optionally or it, just phase it out over time. So that, that's the range of opinions because ultimately it's, it's, a, it's a tax – on the present for future generations, it's a tax some people didn't sign up for, don't want to, don't want to participate in. They, they've got better means of, of taking care of themselves, and it, it all comes back to taxation and and property rights, natural rights, that sort of thing. And uh, does that answer your question? Um, I, to a degree, but uh, but those those positions have to be backed up by some philosophical basis. I mean, the other three people in the room, and yourself too, you've been paying, what, 7.5% of your income has been going into Social Security since you've been working. And now you're just going to say, ah, nope, you're not going to get it. And I'm going to tell you, that's not a winning platform. I'm just... I, I agree. I'm not here to speak for that. Right. <laughs> well, I mean, kind of you are. I mean, right. if you're representing the Libertarian Party. So th that's... I'm trying to... Th it's kind of an opportunity to, to sell the party to people, right? But the, the principle is taxation and voluntary association. So if I'm going to give 7% of my income for my entire working life, that's going to be a voluntary arrangement. Right now, that's not a voluntary arrangement. Also, I'm going to want to send money to where what I think will work best for me. 
uh, as we see, look at the future of Social Security, it's not necessarily working out. Uh, the returns aren't as good as someone could get doing something privately. The, uh, the people managing Social Security, are, it's the federal government, and we, we don't have a very high opinion of the federal government. But people have a high opinion of Social Security. Yes. And uh, you mentioned the Republicans, and you also alluded perhaps the Democrats have considered getting rid of Social Security. That's not really the case. There's been a few ca few candidates at one time or the other say, we have to do something about it, and then the next thing we might get rid of it. But that has never been given serious discussion by the Republicans or the Democrats. Well, well like I said, it has, it has been discussed as it has been discussed in the Libertarian Party. It's not a... It's not a. We're not talking black and white. Um, so, so it's, it, it's libertarians stand for it, writ large, less government or more government. Yeah, well, less less government. So uh, our our platform and statement of principles allow for everything from from no government up to a monarchist government. So the basic functions of government: uh, fire maybe policing, um, rescue, that sort of thing, and, and small uh, national defense that isn't adventuring overseas, getting into foreign wars, but exists for the purpose of natural defense, perhaps a Navy protecting the sea lanes. That would be a monarchist perspective. You said no government. Has there ever been the history of mankind without a government structure? There have been several throughout history who have gotten very close, and they've done quite well. Uh, um, I, I examples didn't, until uh, they were conquered. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah, until they fell apart, though. There, yeah. Uh, uh, off the top of my head, I I'm not going to give you. Well, uh, there's a Iceland is always given as an example, but uh, as Iceland far as Iceland has a firm government. Yes, they do. Uh, as and they had the United States with a great big base there until a few years ago. Correct. So, but but, to, but they uh, also but, have a president, uh, cabinet members, and I'm sorry, uh, we keep interrupting. Yeah. yeah. So, well, the key here is where I'm talking. These are I ideal situations with perfect incomes. We are not looking for a utopia, where what um, what someone might see. I keep wave my hands around. You can wave them. Someone you might, wave good. What someone might see as uh, an I someone might say, hey, we we just need to get rid of government. Well, we're not going to get rid of government. We're not going to get rid of government tomorrow. Uh, but we can make uh, changes, uh, advancements where we can to the government that we have. Um, if, if, if there's people being thrown in jail for, for minor things that they shouldn't be thrown in jail for, we can start to eliminate those. If there's taxes that aren't necessary, things that could be done by the private sector, we start to move in that direction. We're always moving in the direction of liberty. We're not looking for a utopia. Liberty and less government. Liberty and less government. It's a noble goal, right? Who would not want liberty and less government in certain situations? Sometimes government has a job to do, but there are times when most of us would like the government to get out of our way. Yeah, we, exactly right, as long as we're not benefiting for that particular part. And that's the, the function of government is everything they do, some, some part of our demographics are, are benefited. may not be you and I in a particular case, but someone else is benefited. So it's kind of <clears> hard <throat> to say get rid of government and, by, and well, then define I, but, but what But again, it he's not be. saying get rid of all of government. But uh, that's my point. He would like to scale it back. Would we, would we all not like to scale some of it back, though, Bill? So uh, what we would commonly say is sh should government exist, it should exist to protect your rights and the rights of individuals. And that is that is uh, th that would be the minarchist position. Mm -hmm. The reason why government steps in over time is typically because there's been a failure along the way for people to act in the best interests of others. And that's the reason why something springs up. We have more banking regulation now than we had 20 years ago because of 2008. Because given the opportunity, people on Wall Street took well, there's a little spider that just parachuted down there under the board. <laughs> Started up over here. Yeah, yeah. I saw him. He was doing little races around the place. Uh, that was pretty good. He just like parachuted <laughs> right down into the uh, right in front of me there. But uh, that's that's the reason why stricter stricter banking regulations came about because when we when we loosened them, 
People have a tendency to profit and, for themselves and, and screw and everybody you can, else. You can extend that example across the board. Absolutely, yeah. Bill. And that's so, the reason why and, government steps in. And, and in almost every situation, you can also point to a case where the point to the the part where the government caused it. Caused it. Mm-hmm. So that's where we got to find. We got to weave that. That's the balancing act. And now we have the largest, uh, one of the largest governments in history, if not the largest government, which we can't pay for. Which we can't pay for. Mm-hmm. Well, there's also government and different lovers levels of government. and lovers too. Yes. <laughs> you know, from from the you know the HOA to the county to the state to the federal to you know so right. we, and, and where should that be and, and the reason why you have an hoa is because somebody decided they're going to paint their house neon pink and they let the grass go three feet exactly. tall so the neighbors complained and then they decided well we'll form an association and that way they have to cut the grass once a year at right. least right that's the reason why things step in is because sometimes people act irresponsibly with their freedoms right and that's another we talked about earlier decentralizing down to the local level we talked about elections before the show mm-hmm. but uh bringing that level of government i don't think an individual should have any dealing with the federal government mm-hmm. but i should have dealing with the, maybe the county government or the city government where i have a better chance of influencing that election and influencing that outcome and actually being heard whereas i may never meet my senator or my senator may never care what i have to say Travis, uh, real quick to wrap it up, the convention is when and where, and who who can uh, attend? At the Washington Hilton, anyone uh, can attend. Uh, uh, delegates and alternates are going to get priority. Mm-hmm. Uh, visit lnc2024.com for more details. Very good, Travis. Thanks for coming in. Thank you. How'd you do? Are you happy? Serious. Good performance. Good, good performance. <laughs> sure.